Hi, my name is Tom Steffen with Gould's Water Technologies. And today I'd like to talk to you about the new advanced platform for the Aquavar IPC or Intelligent Pump Controller. So one of the things that I want to show you with the advanced platform for the IPC is the MCO301 card uh, that is standard uh, for this platform. So let's take a look at the standard card, which is on what we call the B slot. So I'm just going to pull up the keypad, remove that. I'm going to remove the cover just so we can take a look. So this is the MCO301 card that is standard. We can see here option B, and that's what's called the B slot. And the optional card would be on the A slot. So one feature that uh, is very beneficial with the new card is additional multi-pump features. One is synchronous and the other is a true multi-master, multi-control and much easier wiring. This will allow us to operate up to four pumps in multi-control. So we talked about the B slot, which is standard for the advanced platform. And let me show you the card, the optional card, the, which is the A slot. So we can see here it's, um, your wiring is done from the top side here, and it's just a different location. So if this position works better in terms of wiring, uh, you can order the card, the drive with the A slot card. So let's take a look at some of the wiring here for our basic duplex system. And so we're going to look at the communication cable between our two drives, our transducer hookup. We still need a start jumper. And then we're also going to take you through the input uh, and the output, uh, which doesn't change. So let's first start with the communication cable. Again, this is connected to our other drive here, and we are connecting between five on the MCO301 on our drive here to the same five terminal on pump number one. And we're using the white to connect to seven, and we just want to make sure that you have five to five and seven to seven on the other drive. Now let's move on to the transducer and nothing changes here. So we still have white on analog input 53 and we have to power the transducer and we're getting that from number 12 in this case. Note we still need our start jumper between 12 and 18 uh, if you are not uh, supplying some other signal then you, just like before, you have to connect a start jumper. Note one jumper that's missing with the advanced platform is the no water loss of prime restart jumper. Uh, you do not need that with the advanced platform. And the same as before, note that you have your strain reliefs here to make sure everything's uh, neat and tidy. Uh, for your wires coming in from the bottom. Let's take a look at uh, a quick look at the input and the output uh, where there's no changes there. Uh, keep in mind that we have removed some protective uh, pieces from this drive just for demonstration only. And so we have L1, L2, and L3. Uh, what we've done here is uh, we are bringing single phase in to the drive. Uh, the recommendation is in the field, if you have single phase, you want to order the single phase, dedicated single phase drive. Uh, in this case, we are just working with a three phase drive, however, bringing single phase in. So that's why our input wiring uh, looks like it does. On the output is UVW going to the motor, and just like before, all these terminals are removable and replaceable. And underneath the L1, 2, and 3 in this small A-frame size is your ground lug.
Let's start off with a initialization or factory reset. And the reason why we're going to do that here because these are used for demonstration purposes. So let's just get everything back to um, the factory defaults. Now there's two ways to do that. One is turn the power off, press status, main, and OK. Those three buttons, hold those down, turn the power on, and keep those buttons pressed until you see initialization on the screen. Then you can let go. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it is through your parameters. Obviously, it has to be powered up at the time. And you go to 1420, and you can do it that way. So we're going to use the three-finger reset method uh, in this case. So I'm going to press status, main, and OK, and hold those down until I see the word initializing. Now I can let go. So now I've just reset everything to the factory default settings. So you will not have to do this uh, if it's a brand new unit from the factory. So one of the things that you are going to want to do is you're going to want to check rotation. So uh, notice there that it does turn the, the motor slightly, so uh, you are able to check that rotation uh, at that point in time. And so you want to make sure that the rotation is correct. Um, in this case, we're, we're working with some ESVs uh, with uh, the the guards off the, the couplings so we can see the arrows uh, on the coupling itself. So uh, you always have to check rotation. Uh, if we find that it is going in the reverse rotation, you just want to flip two wires on the output on the motor side and that's your U, V, and W terminals. So let's go through the smart setup here in this case. And we're starting with regional settings, North America. So you can see here I've got my arrow, which allows me to proceed. And, and again, just like the basic version of the IPC, um, you got to hit the down arrow. Uh, the down arrow uh, also saves that setting. So whenever you make a change, you must hit the down arrow. So next we see language US. So again, uh, for us in the U.S., you do not need to change that. So I'm okay with that, so I'm going to hit the down arrow. So pump type application. Booster. Yeah, so this is a booster application. So if you ever wanted to see um, some different options, you would press the OK to highlight it and you would see whatever option you have. So this is a booster we're pumping from tanks and boosting pressure. So again, hit the down arrow to save. So now you have to set up your, your motor information. So um, that we can see on the motor nameplate. And in this case, I've got horse and a half motor. So I'm gonna hit the down arrow to horse and a half, hit the okay. And again, it's given me this symbol on the lower right, which is saying it's okay to proceed. Uh, nominal voltage is, needs to be 230. So see 220, 230, hit the OK button, hit the down arrow. Now I'm at motor frequency, which is OK. Motor nominal speed, I need to change that to 3450. So I'm going to hit the OK button and start changing this. So you just move over to your position. So 3450, hit the OK and down arrow. So motor current, again, I've got to look at the motor nameplate for this information, and it's 4.6. So I'm going to change that to 4.6.
OK, down arrow. OK, so current limit. Current limit is service factor amps divided by nominal amps. And if I do the math, it's about 100 to 910%. Right, so that it, there is a calculation that you need to do with current limit. Service factor amps divide by nominal amps. So I'm OK with 110. So motor types, I have a surface. The other option would be submersible. And these are important because it's changing. If I change that to submersible, it's changing parameters in the background. Right? So I have a surface motor here. Sleep speed, low limit of 30, uh, which is where I'm going to leave that for this system, 30 hertz. So one of the things that's new with the advanced is filter type. And so what we're referring to here is the electrical output filter. And let's take a look at some of the options. Uh, obviously, uh, in this case, we want none because our motor lead length is less than 50 feet. So I don't need an electrical output filter. Uh, but with other pumps, uh, certainly submersible pumps uh, that have long motor lead lengths, uh, you're going to need to add a filter. And you get the option here to identify what type of filter you've added. So the options here are sine wave, DVDT, and just a basic reactor. So in this case, again, no electrical filter, so I'm going to say none. Continue the application setup, yes. I want to make sure that's yes, hit the down arrow. Okay, so operating mode, changing operation mode will overwrite the current setup. So we can see here my default is single pump control. Let's take a look at some options. Single, exit of course, uh, multi-pump control. So that's what we're going to set up here. We're going to set up a duplex. But let's just take a look at what we have. Speed control, um, if you want to run at a specific speed, uh, you can set that up test run mode, or exit. So let's go to multi-pump control. Again, I'm going to set up a duplex. So uh, one of the things that is um, new with the advanced platform is you have several different options for your multi-pump control. And we'll take a quick look at some of these fixed speed follower, fixed speed synchronous, fixed master multi-control, multi-master synchronous, multi-master multi-control. So what we are going to show is we're going to show two different methods because there's a lot of questions on different types of ways in which to uh, do multi-pump setup. So we're first going to start with multi-master, multi-control. So I'm going to select that. So now, very important, you have to have, uh, in this case, two different addresses. And so this is going to be pump address 1. And our other unit is going to be pump address 2. So very important. I'm going to leave this one 1 and then change the other one to 2. And we are going to operate constant pressure because we have a pressure transducer. Let's just take a quick look at what other options. Flow control, if you want to maintain a desired flow. Level control, maintain a, a, a certain level. Constant pressure, and back again. So um, again, we have a pressure transducer, so we want to maintain uh, constant pressure. So pressure control units, uh, the display does not show the units, so you have to tell it what units you want it to be in. So uh, we want to use PSI. So ramp time. So one of the nice things about your quick setup, your smart setup, is you have some very simple options here for ramp time and fast, medium, and slow. And if you do not know, you can start with medium, and you can always go back and change your ramp time. 
So your ramp time is how quickly do you want your system to react based on your demand. So if your demand changes quickly, then you probably want a fast ramp time. If your demand doesn't change very quickly, then maybe you want slow. So in this case, um, we are going to be operating the discharge valve uh, fairly quickly, so let's go with fast. Now you can make additional changes uh, uh, in the parameters, but again, this is just the, uh, the smart setup, the Genie, and it's just designed to give us some, uh, a few options uh, to get us up and running. And more than likely, you probably will not have to get into some of those additional parameters. So number of pumps, two, got a duplex here. Number of standby, zero. Now, would you like to auto set the rest of the settings? So uh, auto set is really handy um, and it just sets all kinds of parameters for you. And so in a simple basic system, uh, this is a nice tool to have and let the system the IPC set everything for you. So we're going to say yes. So set point. Um, it's preset to 50, but let's just go ahead and make a change now to 30. So we can always go back and change any of these. Uh, and there's a new feature here that I'll show you how to change your set point. Uh, but let's set that to 30. And again, remember, anytime you make a change, you got to hit the down arrow to save it. So this is important because it's reminding you, you hit auto set. And this is everything that's set in the background. Constant pressure with a 300 unit or PSI transducer, which is what we have. A four to 20 milliamp sensor, which is what we have. It's on AI53 or analog input 53, which we showed earlier the white wire is on 53. Sleep frequency is 30 hertz. Restart difference is 10. Okay, when do you want it to wake back up again? And default to, to 10, and that's in PSI. So that's 10 PSI below your set point. No water loss of prime fault is enabled, and that's restart time of 10. Duty standby, disabled. Stage speed. So now it's getting into, because we chose multi-pump, um, your staging and destaging. So we've got a 95% stage speed, a destage of 80. Alternation function is on runtime. So another new enhancement is you could change your alternation to runtime and to clock time. So that's another new addition to the advanced platform. All right, so we keep scrolling down. I'm going to hit the OK button. And Startup Genie is complete, so press OK. All right, so we can see here I'm lead pump. All right, here's my system pressure, and it defaults here. All right, so all these are defaults, and you could change any one of these parameters um, in, on your keypad. So if you don't like the default, uh, display, you can change any one of these. So we completed the programming for what we'll call the lead pump here. And so now we need to move on to the lag pump. So again, we got to go through our settings. We're in the smart setup or Genie. And you'll notice that it's the same system, so there's a lot of duplication here. So we got to make the same changes because we have the, the exact uh, duplicate pump here. So a horse and a half, 230 volt, frequency 60, speed 3450. Again, same current, which is 
Current limit's the same, right? Service factor amps divide by nominal amps. Surface motor, sleep speed of 30, no filter, continue application setup, yes. And again, default is single, right? So we want multi-pump control. We've got a duplex. Now it's saying what type of multi-pump control do you want? So we want to match that to multi-master, multi-control, same as the lead. You want to make sure you save it. Pump address. Right, so very important, I have to change this address. Lead was one, lag is going to be two. Constant pressure, number of pumps two, standby zero. Auto set, yeah, we'll do an auto set. Okay, again, reminders of your auto set. So we'll scroll through those. Hit OK. Startup Genie complete. And notice that we have lag pump here. In system pressure, lag pump. And so now our wiring is complete and our programming uh, is complete for a multi master, multi control duplex system. So what I did was I hit the auto on button on both and I opened up my discharge valve and notice we can see a lead and a lag. And we see the lead pump is at 39 hertz. Um, it is meeting our set point of 30 and our lag pump is not running right now. So let me open up the valve We can see the lead pump ramping up. So this is part of the staging process here and it's calling for pump two to come on. So notice that our lead pump is full speed, 60 hertz, and our lag is 36, 37. So that is multi-master, multi-control. Pump one, again, a duplex, full speed. Pump two is varying. So that was multi-master, multi-control. A uh, very quick overview of that. Uh, now let's put those, these units into synchronous, which is uh, what we have on the IPC basic. So synchronous basically means that in this case we have a duplex, so when pump two comes on, both pumps will be operating at the same speed. So let's go in here and change both to synchronous and run both of them. So in order to get back into the Genie or Smart Setup, um, one easy way is go to Quick Menu and go to Startup Genie. So you can always go back to the Startup Genie. So multi-pump control, and we want to change this to synchronous. So multi-master synchronous. So I'm going to make that one change here and save it. Pump address one, double check that. Okay, so now I'm going to go back. Now let's go to the lag pump here, same thing. Start up Genie. So multi-pump control. Let's change that to multi-master synchronous. And we still have pump address two. Let's go back, hit the status button. So we still have my lead lag. Now let's hit the auto on. So my lead pump is still on. 
comes on first. Again, we can see the frequency of 35, 36, able to meet the demand, set point of 30, so I'm going to open up the valve. So again, now the staging process uh, will begin. Remember, staging was 95%, so 95% of 60 is 57. So when this hits 57, there's going to be a delay, and then pump 2 is going to come on. So it hit my 95%, there's a delay, now my pump 2 comes on. So notice the big difference here is when pump 2 came on, they are both operating at the same speed, frequency, and so that is synchronous. So the one addition in terms of uh, your, your advanced platform is you don't always have to run in synchronous. Uh, there are other modes, uh, for an example, like the multi-master, multi-control that we just showed you. So we talked about the additional options that you have for multi-pump operation. Uh, we showed two of them. One is synchronous, and again, when pump two comes on, in this case a duplex, um, both pumps synchronize and will operate at the same speed. The other new, uh, the new option they have is multi-master, multi-control uh, that we also showed. And in this case, lag pump would vary uh, as pump number one was full speed. And you have some other options as well. Um, but I, I want to just kind of summarize uh, some of the other features uh, that we have with the advanced. Um, one is multi-pump, now you can go up to four pumps. So uh, in the past with the basic, you were limited to two. Uh, with the advanced platform, you can connect four pumps together in true lead lag fashion. And the wiring is much simpler now. And we're only talking about two wires uh, between your uh, MC0301 cards. And in this case, your five and seven with the B card, it, that, that is your RS-485 ports. So it's only two wires uh, compared to the wiring harness. Now, one thing to note, if you are using the optional A card here, uh, the wiring is off the top and the terminals are different. Uh, if you are using this card uh, with multi, you are going to connect 62 to 62 in the other pump or pumps and then 63 to 63. So let's review some of the advantages of the IPC Advanced platform. Uh, we looked at uh, several of those. Uh, one is wiring. So when you are operating a multi-pump, and keep in mind we can now go up to four pumps uh, as opposed to two with the basic. So uh, all you got to do is connect two wires between each of the drives. And what we showed you was with the B card, which was terminal five to five in your other pumps and seven to seven uh, in all of your other pumps. So just two wires as opposed to the harness uh, that we were used to uh, with uh, the, the basic platform. Uh, the other thing is the multi-pump options that we have. Um, basic gives you synchronous, and the one other option that we looked at was multi-master, multi-control. So uh, there are other options, um, so you have additional multi-pump options with the advanced platform. Uh, and uh, last but not least is some additional pump protection. So you get uh, high system fault and low system fault, uh, high pressure and low pressure uh, faults and also a pipe fill uh, function.